Let's take a look at processing uh, terrain models from raw survey data. In Open Roads, we'll go to the task on the pull down here. Uh, if we set this to survey, we see now the, the ribbon across the top has several tabs, uh, one of them pertaining to terrains. This provides us uh, several methods for creating terrains, editing terrains, uh, reporting, um, several different options for manipulating and managing terrain models. So the first thing we'll do here is in the Explorer, we'll come down to the survey section and we will import some raw data, creating a new field book. Uh, there is an option here that allows you to create terrain models from field book selection set. Uh, that's an alternative method if you have brought in several field books and you want to just uh, select one or more to create a terrain model from, you can do that once you've brought them in. In our case, we have some project settings set up to uh, handle terrain models when the raw data is processed. And we'll have a look at that in just a second. So the first thing we'll do here is create a new field book. Um, and this is the settings file that will be used to create the terrain model when the raw data is, is brought in. So I'll simply select this. That needs to be pre-configured uh, prior to importing your data. So now that we have a field book created, uh, we can come here and now import uh, the data. So there's several different options here, whether you're using ASCII files or raw files. In this particular case, we have some TDS RW5 files. Um, and I'm just going to select the whole group here. There's several of them here to, to bring in and process them all at one time. So in order to not duplicate or override existing points, we have a dialog here that gives us the option to rename, skip, or add a prefix to points with the same name. I'm just going to select the name and increment the value by one and select apply all. Now that the data has been processed, uh, we can have a look at how the terrain is handled. And the first thing I'll do here is just turn off some of these observation sight lines and the setup and control point so we can get a better view of the, the raw survey data. Now, in this case, we don't see triangles uh, automatically processed, but that's simply because the feature definition is not set to display triangle. In this particular case, the um, project settings for our survey only use the feature definition to only display the boundary. And here we can see that there is a terrain model. It just simply has the, the triangles not displayed. And we can override that by using our selection tool and going to the quick properties. Here you'll see uh, quite a bit of information about the terrain model, uh, the edge method, the length, um, also at the top, the raw data, the number of points that were processed. and the bottom portion here is for display. And here you can see the only thing in the list here that's turned on is the boundary. Now that was controlled by a project setting that we'll have a, a look at in a second that you can see here has a feature definition set to existing boundary. So essentially that's saying just display the boundary when the terrain model is processed. If we wanted to take a quick look at the triangles, we could simply turn these on. And now you see that there are uh, plenty of triangles that were processed with the raw data. Again, the quick properties here can be found by selecting the boundary and uh, using the heads up menu to open up the, the quick properties. So let's go see the project settings that control how this was processed. Now, this is under the uh, Open Road Standards pull down. If we go here and look at our active file, Terrain DGN, we can see that under the bottom here in the survey settings, it has copied those settings into the active file. And that was the prompt that I got when I first started to create the new field book. So here we can review these uh, settings, project settings, by right clicking and selecting properties. And this will bring up the properties dialog so that we can look at the various settings. Uh, general settings just have some op uh, options for how the the files, the raw data files are processed, 
likewise, how points are handled, what's imported, um, where the control points are or not, how to the connectivity of all the points, the linking codes and such. Now, each uh, feature code and point, of course, has uh, terrain information with it, whether to include it as a brake line or a spot shot or a drape or other features of a terrain model. In the last option here, and we'll just go ahead and jump to terrain model options, you'll see that these settings control how those are processed. So the very first one there says create terrain model for all field books, and that option has been set to true. So what that means is as it's being processed, that it's going to automatically generate the terrain model. Now, if you have a situation where you don't necessarily want to create that terrain model uh, automatically when you import your data, you can simply set this to false. And what that would do is that would bring in all of your survey and, and draw all of your features, display all of your features into the MicroStation file, yet you wouldn't have a terrain model. This, you may want to do this to allow you to make edits to survey features. Uh, you might want to need some cleaning up. And then you could use a option here on the, on the ribbon that says create uh, terrain from elements and that simply allows you to use the microstation selection set to highlight all of the elements and then create a terrain model from that uh, so back here on the properties for the project settings with that one set to true our raw data was processed and the terrain model was created automatically um, and of course you could provide a default name here um, we could change that to a project number or project name after the fact, or even before the fact, we could change the field books uh, to a different name. And here in the middle is the feature definition. Now, this is where this guy was set to uh, boundary. And if I go just toggle off the terrains, this is what came in, just the, the terrain boundary uh, of the terrain model. So if I, if I wanted to uh, go back here and look at these properties again, if I wanted to change that, I could simply come in here and select a different feature code uh, of maybe triangles. And then when it, it came in, we would have, of course, all of our triangles shown. Um, this only happens when things are processed. So uh, back to the properties. The last two options here are the edge method. This is the maximum triangle length. Um, you want to set this to some nominal value, essentially, so that you don't get triangle across areas like this where, the, where it shouldn't triangulate. Um, and each data set is different. You will have to come up with a, a value that fits your situation. So a couple quick notes here about survey from uh, terrain models from survey. I can go in here and turn these triangles back on just so we can have a look. Um, Notice now if I went up to say, uh, edit the terrain model. If I select this guy and I come out to try to make an edit to it, maybe uh, delete a vertex or swap break lines, uh, triangles, whatever you're editing, um, you might want to. You notice that I get the message that says it's not an editable, editable terrain. And that is because those settings were set to create it from the raw data um, as it processed. Uh, create this one here, creating a terrain model from all field books. Essentially, what that does is it sets a rule and it doesn't allow us to make edits because it's tied to the raw survey data. So, if we wanted to make an edit to the terrain model, what we would have to do is essentially turn off the rules that control uh, the triangles being tied to the data. Uh, for automatic processing. And the way that we can do that is you can come here and select uh, the top level here for default. There's an option here to deactivate survey processing rules. If you turn that off, you deactivate it. Then you select edit the terrain model. You notice now that we're able to go in and delete a vertex or uh, swap a triangle on. Essentially, uh, changing the way it was processed by default and making modifications to it. Another thing, uh, one other thing here is a nice tool under reporting. We have report crossing 
features. And this will allow you to select the terrain model and have it perform a scan on all the, the linear features, break line features, and report any that may cross. And if I simply select that, it also allows us to apply an elevation tolerance uh, in case two lines cross that were essentially the same. Uh, we could provide some sort of filter tolerance here and, and avoid those that may not be uh, true crossing break line. In this case, I'll just provide the three thousandths, select OK, and of course you can see it came back with quite a few crossings. Um, this allows you to perform an edit to fix a crossing. Uh, it gives you information here, important information about each crossing feature, the intersection coordinate, the elevation on one feature, the elevation on the second feature, what the difference is, and then a visual to show you which is which. So let's just, if I took one here, I'm going to right click on it and select zoom to. And you see that it puts it in the middle of the screen. We have a red break line and a blue break line, which corresponds to feature type one and feature type two. And if we right click, you see that there's an option here to perform a couple of edit functions. You can delete feature one, feature two, insert a point into both features at a defined elevation. Uh, you could average them out, uh, insert points, etc. So there's several editing options. If we zoom out here a little bit, uh, we can see probably that this uh, top of ditch here um, is out of place. Uh, so if we wanted to uh, make a modification to one of those, we could just simply say uh, average and elevation, and it would go through and it would fix that particular cr crossing and remove it. Ideally, I think that point probably needed to be removed out of this ditch feature here it's obviously out of place so that's how you can make some edits and process terrain models with open road survey if you found this video helpful please give it a like if you want to see more such series consider subscribing to our channel thank you and see you next time